Hey guys, today's from the install bay. We're gonna show you how to tap into a fuse box. So stay tuned. So a lot of times in car audio, you need to tap in to get some form of an ignition power, either to turn on a amplifier, turn on a charger, turn on a radio maybe. Either way, you, you need to find one, and one of the easiest ways to do that is to go to the fuse box. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show you, one, how to locate the wire that you want to use, give you some pointers there, and of course show you how to do it as cleanly as possible so that it just doesn't look bad and is as safe as possible because safety of course is the most important thing. You don't want to accidentally blow something up in your car. So let's go ahead and get started. So the car we're going to be working with today is a G35. Uh, and for the most part that doesn't matter. The principles are all still the same. But the first thing you have to do is of course is locate where the fuse box is. In this case it's located here next to the emergency brake pedal. Okay, so before you start, what you want to do is take a look at your fuse diagram and try to get an idea of where you want to start. So in this case, we see things that say power socket and cigarette lighter. Those are good places to start if you're in a Japanese car. Some American cars will turn on and off, most of them don't. Things you want to stay away from are things like airbag, electrical parts, O2 sensor, something or funky acronyms like this here. Things like that can interface with computers in the car that if the fuse blows your car may not start so you definitely want to stay away from things like that so to start we're going to check these two and see if either one of them is controlled by the ignition circuit in the car and for that we'll need a voltmeter so let's grab that so we want to set our meter to dc which is the solid line with the dots below it and a v that stands for dc voltage next what we want to do is take our probes one of them is going to need to go to ground which is always, there's usually a bolt or something in the car that you can attach it to. And then you want to go over to the fuse that you think might be the one you want. So in this case, it was a 15 amp. And it's not reading anything with the car off. Let's go ahead and turn the car on. Okay, so now we'll test it again. So it now has power. So that means this one turns on and off with the car. And that's what we're looking for. So we know it's a, a low importance fuse and it turns on and off with the car. So for what we're trying to do, it's gonna work. Now other things to check too is every now and then you'll have open spots in the fuse box that don't have fuses in them. Some of those are ignitions. So you definitely wanna test anything that's open to see if it also turns on and off with the car. You know, because if you can find one of those, it's like a bonus. So now we're going to go ahead and pull out that fuse. The easiest way to do that is with some form of a needle nose pair of pliers. Now what we need to test is see what side of this fuse is the load side and which side is the draw side. The load side is going to be the side that has 12 volts. The draw side is going to be what's going out to the circuit. We want to make sure that we put this in properly so that if, so the fuse blows. So we're going to test for the load sides. We'll go ahead and put it back to ground. We'll turn the car back on. So in this car, the bottom of the fuse is the load side. So we have to make sure we put our fuse tap in properly. So let's take a look at a few choices that we have for tapping into the fuse box. Now, what we have on display here is three different types of fuses. We have the standard ATC style fuse, we have the ATM, and then we have the ATM LP. These are just the shorter version of these. These are all taps that will go into a fuse box as well as we have these guys over here. Now the most common thing we run into is a person will take their fuse out of their fuse box and they'll grab a piece of wire and they'll wrap around one of the legs we will do this funky little knot thing where they twist it on and they end up with this little guy like this and they jam it back into the fuse box. Yeah, okay, it's doable. Not exactly the best way to do it. If you're looking to do a connection like that, that's what these little guys are made for here. These have these little sleeves and what they'll do is they'll go onto a fuse like this. Okay, so that it, it sleeves over the fuse, so 
when you put it in, it's all locked into place. Now then you have this cool little mail piece hanging out. And what you use for that is a female connector that just plugs in over the top like this. So you end up with this in the fuse box. Now the trick to using something like this is that when you go to put it in the fuse box, you have to make sure that the hot side is this side here so that if for some reason your wire is to short out, it will blow the fuse. So if you put it in this way, what will happen is if this wire shorts out, it'll go ahead and just burn down the line. It won't blow the fuse because it's actually not a fuse circuit. So you have to make sure you put these in the right direction. And they make them for both the ATM style fuses as well as the ATC bigger fuses. And it's basically the same idea. It just goes in like such and then locks into place and you have a female version here. And of course there's a couple different versions of these that I've seen. Some of them are where you just can slide, the th they have a hole here and you slide this through. So there's a couple different options as far as that goes. So now if you'd like it to look as clean, as professional as possible, you're gonna wanna get one of these little fuse tap pigtails. Now, let's take a closer look at this. So let's take a closer look at this. So what we have here is a standard fuse tap and then we have these four holes on the top. So what you're gonna do is when you're meeting in your fuse panel, you're gonna go ahead and pull out whatever fuse it is you felt, you know, the circuit you wanna use. In this case, let's say it's a 10 amp. You're gonna pull that out of your fuse box and you're gonna put it right here in this bottom row here. It's gonna go like that. Now you have this top portion right here is going to be your new load. It comes with this wire here that you can hook up to whatever it is your draw is gonna to have to be. So then you're gonna fuse that. Now this fuse always has to be lower than this bottom fuse. You can't put like a 30 here and a 20 here. It's just not going to work. It's not going to protect anything. The other thing too is like the previous, you have to make sure you have the load and the draw side correct in the fuse box. So this is your load side here and this is your draw side. So this is the side that's actually going to, you know, going to go off to whatever it is you feel you need to hook up. Um, that way, if you hook it up the other way, let's say, to where you know, this is your load and this is your draw, what's gonna happen is it's gonna go zigzag through here to blow the fuse. You want it to blow the fuse on this circuit, not blow two fuses, because if you have to blow two fuses, well, you can just blow the whole circuit all together. So load side here, draw side here. And by load, I just mean this is the, the 12 volt side. This is the side that actually has the 12 volt key or constant. So you have this style here, which is gonna be for the ATC style fuse. You have this guy here, which is the same thing, just for the ATM style fuse. So you have your small fuse that you'll put in the top here. Then you have your fuse that you took out. It's gonna go right here. So you also have your ATM LP fuse, which is right here. So your factory fuse there again goes in the bottom. And then the fuse you're adding goes up here in the top. So you end up with the same idea, load side, draw side. So we have our fuse tap for this car. We're gonna go ahead and put our 15 amp fuse back in. We have our new fuse for the circuit we're gonna hook up to this. Now what we have to do is we just have to make sure that we put the load side down. So it's gonna sit in the fuse box like this. All right, so that's how you successfully tap into a fuse box safely and cleanly. All right, what do you think, Fernando? I think it's nice. He thinks it's nice. All right, guys, as usual, thanks for watching. We hope you found this very helpful and informative. We do this thing five days a week. Because we don't believe in sleep at all, ever. We need sleep. <laughs> all right, bring this one to a all home. All right, so thank you for watching. You guys can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And as usual, we appreciate everything you guys do. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, have a nice night, and we will see you later next time. Bye. You left me hanging. No, because I, I closed my... Oh, you closed yeah. your eyes, you're getting blinded. Yeah. Oh, back hurts. Oh.